Hello, everyone. I'm Scott Homan. I am volunteering for the DeCult Cult Awareness Conference in New Zealand this year. Today, we have Ulrike Schiese from Austria. She's a psychologist and psychotherapist working for the Federal Office of Cult Affairs. She's also worked with the Radicalization Awareness Network, the British Skeptics Society, the European Council of Skeptics Organization as a speaker, as well as Skeptics in the Pub. How are you doing today, Ulrike? Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm fine. I'm looking forward to this interview. Great. The reason why we're here today is because both of us have been invited by Anka Richter in Christchurch to speak at her Decult Cult Awareness event. And what is it that you'll be speaking about this year at the event? Yeah, I will talk about my work in the Austrian uh, Federal Office for Cult Affairs. Um, which is a quite um, special institution and um, Anke is trying to um, get something similar or yeah, maybe also for New Zealand. And so I will talk about our work with cults in Austria. I saw that you, you wrote a couple articles in a book. Um, could you speak about those? I wrote a book about um, how to talk to people who believe in um, esoteric, in all kinds of religions, but also conspiracy theories. So uh, people that you can't reach with logical arguments, but um, but you have to have still still want to have a connection. You still want to reach them, or sometimes sometimes you um, you might be afraid that um, they uh, that they need some help. But how can you talk to someone who is very uh, close minded and very much uh, in a belief system? So this book is about talking to people when it's not about logic. Mm. I noticed you did a lot of work in the European Union, especially when it came to making sense of information during the global pandemic. Could you speak a bit about your work there? Yeah, um, in the pandemic, we got a lot of um, questions um, uh, about from, from often, often it was friends or family members of someone who, um, who was drawn to um, uh, conspiracy theories and they they sometimes were very much um, how can I say they 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 said I I, it, I can't believe that my mother is talking like this or I never thought this friend of mine would be uh, would be believing this kind of things and I I have no idea how to talk to them but uh, it, it's it's very emotional because it's about vaccination it's about um, uh, the about the pandemic and there was a lot of emotion and uh, people were quite uh, unsure how to deal with this topic. And so we we did a lot of counseling in this way. Um, and uh, well, some, I, I can tell you some of the, some of the things we normally uh, advise people because they were quite unsure how to talk to them. Um, we, we advise them to find out if someone is still willing to discuss about a topic or if they are already believers. If they are willing, if they're not so, so sure about it, um, then it's important to focus on information um, in the best way, sit together on a computer and um, go to uh, good fact checking sites and mm. um, focus on the most important uh, information and uh, the stronger counter arguments. But um, yeah. most of the times people are already um, really believing in these things. It's, it's, mm -hmm. um, it's a lot like, a, a relig like religious belief systems. So it's a matter of faith. Uh, in this, mm -hmm. um, when, it, when, it's, when it's like this, then um, stop discussing the content of um, some conspiracy theory, but focus on the sources. Why mm. do you believe this kind of information? Um, where does it come from? Why, would you believe um, this person also in other kinds of things? Would you buy a car because uh, you get it from this kind of source? So or what could, could convince you that this is a hoax? So better mm. to ask questions, better to, to work on this um, 
point of information, what kind of information is good and why uh, believe, is someone believing it and focus on maintaining a positive relationship. So hmm. stay in contact, uh, try to um, find br a bridge uh, that's um, not always to deal, not always dealing with the conspiracy theory, but have some other hobbies, some other op op topics to talk about. And yeah. be very patient because it takes a lot of time to 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 change someone's um, yeah that someone is changing the their belief systems. Yeah, I, I listened to one of your other podcast episodes you were interviewed on or you spoke on about that topic of asking a good question, a well worded question coming from a, a healthy place could have a he much larger impact than a lot of data or a lot of facts or directly challenging what they told you they believe with your belief or more information. Yeah. And only ask a question if you're really interested in the answer. Because mm. don't ask questions just to, as an, you know, a kind of um, instrument to, to get a person to a point you want them to go. Because mm. people have a very good um, awareness if you're really yeah. interested in them or if you just want to push them in some direction then it won't yeah. work so only ask mm. a question if you're really interested in the answer if you're really willing to listen and it's often more the, the relationship um, uh, that's more effective than uh, than the arguments that you have to have a good relationship to to really yeah see the person as a whole and not only as someone you want to convince or uh, yeah yeah there was another tool that's really similar from a book i read recently i think it's called how to change a mind or how to change someone's mind and they they said ask a question and listen to the answer and then dive in more and ask more questions and then come back to the original question at the end of the conversation and just be interested in them authentically and often by the end if you ask that same question at the beginning and at the end, they will have convinced themselves that they don't even care about that topic that they were like so strong about. I mean, that was like a political, how do you change someone's mind on the politics side? Yeah, and it's so yeah. simple, just actually have genuine human curiosity. And you'll probably find out that the person will talk themselves out of their own ideology. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> um, I think we have to... Um, uh, don't believe that you can change somebody's mind just with arguing or with, with talking. It's, it doesn't work. People don't mm. change their mind because they have a good discussion. They might change it in some ways when it's not about something that's emotionally very important to them. But if it's an emo important, um, it's really something that's very important to them. Uh, it's not really about about the discussions, about the talks. Um, you see, I'm, I'm working also on the other side with people who have changed their opinions or their, their, their way, how they see the world in a very fundamental way. Maybe they have um, followed in a cult or they have left the cult or they have um, really drastically changes in their uh, perception of the world and I always ask them um, what were the causes why, why did you change uh, could in your family could someone have done something said something that um, might have helped you to get sooner to the point where you are like now look inward about yeah, how yeah. things have actually changed you in the past yeah what have changed you yeah. and could could someone, someone have facilitated that a bit sooner mm. And they get always the same answer. They, they always say, no, there was nothing someone outside had, could have done. It's an inner process. It's something that you re really have to live through. It's, it's, it's often about experiences people have, experiences yeah. in their group, in, in their life, and that makes them change their worldview. It's not, not, not the thing that you do or say to someone. It's more yeah. really relationships, and it's a long-time uh, project. Yeah, just to give some um, personal experience of that, growing up with Jehovah's Witness ideologies, there was always someone telling me something that was incorrect about the religion. And for me, it was like, okay, there's 1,000 reasons why this religion isn't real. But there's this one, you know, immortality is the thing. I want to live forever. Or like, death isn't real, according to them. Um, 
uh, and then like, oh, Bible prophecy. Well, that must be real. So as long as there's like one or two things, I will stick with this worldview. And it lasted years, many years, like eight more years after. And that was from teenager to like my late, mid, late twenties. So it took a lot. Um, it took a lot of my internal process to eventually get to the point where like, oh, actually, yeah, those things are also not true. Finally, I can, I can be free of this whole thing. Yeah. But yeah, it took a long time. So and very yeah. interesting. What I love about someone in your position is that like, you're not just in one isolated group. You're kind of out looking at all the, all these different groups and all these different opinions. And you're seeing the human condition in a more neutral general sense. And then, yeah, yeah. yeah. we see the patterns and we also yeah. see the patterns, uh, the similar patterns. If we talk about religions, but also about political extremism, about um, conspiracy theories, um, about um, people who um, who don't want the state, uh, state rejectionists. So, um, state rejectionist? Yeah, the, yeah the people who say the state is not real, like Freeman or um, okay. the state does not exist, you don't have to pay taxes, you don't have yeah. to... No the passports. People, Real, yeah. That they, they, they say there is yeah. no state. There's um, uh, in in Germany, it mm. is Reichsbürger. Uh, but a lot, all different, right. all, all all countries have their own kind of people like yeah. this. But if you go uh. down to the bottom of it, you find the very same driving factors, the same, mm. um, yeah, fears, hopes, um, yeah, yeah, motivation. So yeah. What and you're saying the same as general citizens or the religion or a, a different group. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's really similar. It's easier if it's a, a kind of, a, if it's um, based on a religion, then you have a lot more power. Um, uh, because, but, but we also have a lot of, um, we, we, say, um, we, we get asked about multi-level marketing for an example, because some people say, oh, yeah. people, some, not all of course, but some people in multi-level marketing systems are very pushy and they say, this is not just a product, this is a way of life. Uh, and they they sell more than just a product. Um, and there, yeah. there are parallels to, to, to cults. Uh, but if it's um, based on a spiritual or religious system, it's a lot more powerful because mm. you can't say, no, there is nothing wrong in my aura. Uh, <laughs> I've not been cursed. If a person that you really believe in tells you um, there is a powerful curse upon you and um, he has to save you or you will die and you believe it, then it's an ultimate power. Nothing else uh, comes comes close to it. But yeah. um, the but the, the 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 patterns are similar in in all kind of groups. It's I like to use the multi level marketing as an example to like if you're trying to like frame the the religious issue, identifying as a Jehovah's Witness or as a Mormon or uh, some of the groups in New Zealand like Gloria Vale. Um, that identity is so strong, but if you replace the identity label of Jehovah's Witness with like Tupperware or Herbalife or Amway as multi-level marketing organizations, it, then it's like, oh, well, that has a lot less weight and power over me because they're just selling like boxes and granola bars and like juice drinks. <laughs> and, and like, I don't need to spend my life identifying as that thing. And it's easier to like separate that part of your life if you think, if you like replace the label for the religion, because the religion, like you said, takes on this huge power over you or inside of you of God, or, you know, there's the power of some supernatural being like demons or Satan or something is a much larger concept than Tupperware and yeah. Amway. <laughs> well, in, yeah. in a superficial way, you could say they are all selling you something, mm. but 
of course, it's a, it's a lot different if it's about your whole life, your family, your belief systems. It's 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 a, it goes a lot deeper. It's yeah. also um, it, it's also more sustaining you in in a positive way. But it could also be a lot more dangerous. It's so it's um, yeah. Uh, two sides of a coin. It, uh, you can get more out of a religious context, more um, help in, in life situations, but it can also be more devastating if it's uh, used wrong against you. And uh, the, the, the stronger the power structure, the more there is the abuse. I don't think there's any power without abuse. So absolute mm. power leads to abuse. Uh, that's my, my maybe I'm a bit cynical, but that's uh, my um, like a thesis. Yeah, that, that's what I've seen. That the, yeah. and the abuse could be in different kinds of ways. Could be a financial, um, sexual, emotional, spiritual. But power, especially um, absolute power, without um, good good control systems. Um, is, is always uh, sooner or later it leads to abuse. As someone with such a much broader view and a different perspective being for, in Europe, could you talk about how, how deep these problems are and what you want to change and like, where, where is this affecting people? Where is this power affecting people besides, besides the obvious, like classic cult? or even some high control religions and, and cultic religions like Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, where do you see the problems lying right now in society? Mm -hmm. um, we don't have so much these big groups, these big cult-like communities, like in the 80s, 70s. Um, it's a lot smaller now. We have small communities. Sometimes it's just one influencer and five people, 10 people, 15 people mm. that are very much uh, influenced by this one person. And nobody outside has any awareness of that. Uh, and there are really hundreds, thousands of them. So it's not not uh, it has changed not from the big groups to very small ones um, and what we see is that uh, the danger of uh, religious uh, fanaticism is rising worldwide um, we we are living in uncertain times and um, people are often looking for clear answers for simple solutions and they are more likely to follow uh, some charismatic authoritarian leaders. And we see it in, in the rise of um, fundamental uh, religious groups, uh, but it could also be esoteric groups. Uh, um, but but there there is more, um, yeah. I, I get we get more problems in this in these ways now, and more problems with people who say no. I don't met, I don't use medical treatments. I believe in my guru or my mm -hmm. shaman or whatever. Uh, people um, who could have um, uh, good medical treatments, who who have a possibility for 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 school systems, but they say, no, I don't, I take my children out of school. Um, I don't believe in, in, in the system anymore. I, mm. I go, uh, I want to go outside of the systems, more people who are um, looking for some social utopian um, way of living outside of society. Um, and at the same time, the organizations who deal with cults or have experience with cults are decreasing. Um, because the churches who often have been um, the, the founding organizations, um, they, they, they don't want to, to deal with the cult pot topic because they say cult, well, we want to have good relationships with other churches and we don't want to use the, the word cult anymore. And mm, it's not really, yeah. we have, and sometimes they, they, they don't have the, the money anymore. They have to see, have to look out where they want to where to put their resources. So the church-based organizations are withdrawing and um, a lot of the retiring experts are not replaced. And there are very, very few uh, government, uh, as a government founded organizations. And mm -hmm. in Austria, we are one of the really few worldwide who are 
100 um, percent governmental. We are not. Um, wow. Um, uh, so we, we are not a self-help group or some, um, um, like, like there, there are a lot of them who come out of a self-help field and do a good work, but um, it's easier if you really have a good founding and we are um, established by a federal law. So um, oh. that gives you a good position and we are um, uh, neutral, we, have, we are ideologically neutral and we can um, offer counseling um, free of charge, of course, because it is a, a state institution. Um, and that's um, a very important point. A lot of people come to us and say, we want to go to um, uh, an institution that it's not, uh, not in any way in connection to a church because yeah, if that's you, super if important. You, yeah. Have you heard if, of the uh, secular therapy project or the secular therapy.org. That's where I found my first therapist and she uh -huh. had, she was focused on family, but also people who've left religions because she also went through that. And so she like made a specialty and cause she left the Mormons having someone yeah. who went through that process from my perspective was incredible. Is that associated with your group or is your group completely its own thing? That's non affiliated with, with religions. Yeah. Yeah, for some religions uh, as a whole are beyond ground and they don't want to deal with anybody who is uh, associated with some kind of religion. Yeah. It's for them really important to have an, um, yeah neutral uh, ground. Um, yeah. And um, also um, if you are part of a state and a state organization, it's easier to um, uh, to be a bridge between other institutions like social help, or if, if it's about child care, or also if you see that uh, a group is trying to get into schools or is you can, it's easier for me to warn other ministries or to, um, yeah, uh, to, to, um, give informations uh, also to politicians and um, we have some annual report that is um, uh, every year is is dealt with in the parliament so it's um, quite a high official report uh, about the state of, of cults or cult-like behaviors in Austria for each year so you I think that's really important to not put this topic into the hands just of um, uh, 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 organizations who have to to um, how's it called ehrenamtliche um, they they uh, who are not get paid but <laughs> have to do it on their on their free times. Mm. So um, yeah. they do often very good work, but it's difficult to maintain um, um, an ongoing high professional um, work. And we, we deal in a topic where very few professionals have insight, also psychotherapists, psychologists in the field. They don't get trained in dealing with the topic of cults. Wow. They often are very naive, very, um, yeah, they don't see, see the topic. Often they are not um, trained in, to in, in dealing with religions per se. So asking about the religions, talking about religions with their clients, that's a bit of a blind spot in a lot of psychotherapeutic mm -hmm. um, systems. Um, and yeah. What was really striking about what you were saying earlier was like groups on online or people following one influencer on YouTube, let's say, and having five people who like are dedicated to following that person. That is an uncontrollable, like exponential rise in that situation because of the technology that we're all using now. And I have a YouTube channel. We're on it now but I don't want people to follow me, but I can see that that being an angle for someone for narcissistic supply or just to influence people with idea, like their bad ideas. And I, I'm starting to see these patterns everywhere with like spiritual groups, 
Um, I mean, I, in, in the smallest way, it seems innocent, but like cacao ceremonies are like everywhere in the Americas, like come to a cacao ceremony and then sit in a circle and, and there's special language and there's special dress. And it's like, oh, you guys are just copying like every cult ever. And they're like, no, no, we're not a cult. We don't want you to have, be our follower. And then, but then they like start using all the special language. And I'm like, if I don't use a special language, I'm not one of you. And it's like this. So for me, it's like, this is everywhere. And I wonder if I'm just paying attention to it because I'm, I'm like working in this space and I'm talking about this topic and I'm reading books on the topic a lot, or if it's actually on the rise. And to hear you say that, it just feels like it's on the rise and it's a problem and there's no one trained. So I, I think it's really special that you're uh, going out and spreading the spreading the knowledge in, in the way that you can. Yeah, and I hope very much that uh, other countries are more aware, get more aware of these problems and are more willing to fund, to, to fund uh, um, professional work in this way. Because yeah. it's really difficult. I see it uh, when I get some media, um, some, some media they, they, when, they, when, they, when they need some, some expertise. It's, I had, there, in, in Europe, uh, in, in the German speaking uh, field, maybe 10 people I can name, but I think it's less than 10 people. So it's, it's really, there, there are hardly any wow, uh, social topic where you have so, so such a small group of um, really neutrally, not, not in a way belonging to a church, neutrally um, professionals in this way. Um, maybe it has to do with that we in our in our field um the problems that we have uh, um can be very as can be, there can be very negative consequences but we have seldom criminal offenses it's seldom mm. that our clients can really go to court or uh, and so it's it's a bit of a yeah a dark field you don't see the problems they can mm -hmm. be they can be horrendous they can be we have each year, some people who are dying because their therapist says, or their their shaman in shaman or whatever says, they should not do can cancer treatments or something like that. Yeah. Um, but it's it's invisible. You don't see this uh, this kind of of problems. I see that a lot in the group that I came from, with the denial of medical practice when it comes to topics of blood, the blood transfusion, and the, around the whole world in that group, people are dying. And it's not just like the idea in their head. They actually send emissaries from the local congregation to their bed at the hospital and, and convince them not to, to make sure that they don't allow medical care. And then they die. And then they use that dead person as a martyr. Like, look at this person um, all the way until death served God, served mm -hmm. us. And it's like, how many martyrs do you need? You know? And it feels like governments all over the world don't understand and there's not work in this. I really, I think it's, I think you're absolutely right that it's important to have a group like yours run that's funded by the government to bring awareness, bring the intellectual level to yeah, a high place, not just an influencer at night talking about these issues in their free time. Can we talk a little bit about um, Decult? Um, we're going to be both speaking at this conference with, we have the keynote speaker, Yanya Lalich, who will be there. Here's some of the other speakers who will be there. Are you, do you know what panel you'll be speaking on? Yeah, and it's a lot about uh, also um, getting to other professionals in the social work. So in mm. uh, psychotherapists, but also um, social workers, you, uh, worker, um, people who work with, with especially children and young people, because they are um the the most vulnerable they they live with parents or live in 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 this kind of groups and there is a tendency we see that to um cut them off from society to isolate them um and uh we mm. we have, as a society we have a really important um uh, yeah we, we we have to to look out for these children especially so, uh, yeah, okay. I want to, to tell about this, about the things about our work and hopefully that, um, that, that we get a bit more, 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 um, 
offices like ours worldwide and to uh, yeah to, to 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 get a kind of network it's it's very important to meet on conferences i i i love to meet other experts um like on the ixa or in, in new zealand at the conference there are so few of us and the, even that's even more important to um to compare our um yeah, our our view and to see to see the the, the the development of the field because there's a lot of happening now and we have we are sort of a bit of a seismographic um, institution to see uh, the the changes happening. We sometimes we are the first to get the. Um, yeah, to see where 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 some social developments uh, are going, and um, so it's important to uh, exchange our views to help us uh, together and to uh, to spread the work and to to build new um, new awareness and um, help others uh, to to get a professional insight in this field. I love that analogy of a, a social seismograph. The first ones to notice uh, an effect in the world, even just with my interviews, when I interview someone who had a background in the experience of exiting a high control or a cultic group, I learn something. I learn a new perspective every time or a different way of seeing things that brings clarity to my understanding of the world. And I can imagine when, when you're doing the deep work every single day professionally, that sharing, meeting another professional in the space would be an incredible conversation and education. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to, to seeing you there and thank you so much for coming on and, and for going to decult. It's a long way to go and it's a really special opportunity, I think for everybody involved. So yeah, thanks again for coming on to this short interview. Yeah. Thank you for the invitation. I'm looking very, I'm looking forward to, to meeting you in New Zealand. Bye. <laughs>